However, the Lord of Flowers never knew a love that could be as sweet as wine, let alone the paltriness of human emotion. Brilliant as she was, even she could not easily predict when these little beings would finally realize the truth. Have these so-called gods not been superfluous to you since the beginning? Gods in Tevats are a complex topic because as discussed numerous times, in Tevat there exist two kinds of gods. There's the gods who walk amongst humanity, and then there's the real gods. The ones who control everything from their island in the sky up above. The ones we should be thanking for everything, who we will henceforth be calling the Shades to avoid any confusion moving forward. Powers and authority aside, the one key thing that separates the two groups of gods is origins. What do I mean by this? I want you to ask yourself, where do the gods come from? Stunned silence takes the crowd. If you're thinking to yourself, oh no, use an honest some bitch, I like you. <laughs> and that's because truth be told, we, we don't. We don't know where the gods come from. This is in stark contrast with the shades who were created before the human realm even came into existence by the hands of the Primordial One, a progenitor god hailing from beyond the stars. Quote, when the eternal throne of the heavens came, the world was made anew. Then the true Lord, the Primordial One, came forth and did battle against the seven terrifying sovereigns, dragon lords of the old world. The Primordial One created shining shades of itself, and the number of these shades was four. You see, when the Primordial One decided to do battle with the Sovereigns, the Primordial One saw that it was outnumbered. So you know what the Primordial One did? The Primordial One sat there and simply chuckled, <laughs> created four mighty gods from itself and proceeded to beat the bitch out of the Sovereigns. This is what separates the Shades from the gods. They were made at the Earth's rebirth and after defeating the Sovereigns in 40 years flat, spent 360 years helping to create the human realm, quote, the mountains and rivers were made and the seas and oceans accepted those who rebelled and those who would not kneel. The primordial one in one of its shades created the birds of the air, the beasts of the earth and the fish of the sea. Together, they also created the flowers, grass and trees before finally creating humans, our ancestors, numerous as the stars in the sky, uncountable as the sand on the shore. From that time, our ancestors made a covenant with the primordial one and so entered into a new age. They exist beyond the human realm and thus aren't bound to it, unlike the gods on Earth, who for a time seemingly never existed at all. As a matter of fact, it was our good old pal Enju, Enjo, however the fuck you say that nigga's name, <laughs> who informed us of this fact. The reason the book before Sun and Moon is so important is that it details what the world was like before the gods walked the Earth. However, this isn't exactly true, or it's simply meant to be taken literally as in when the gods walked the earth. The current understanding of the lore operates as such. There was once a time of great prosperity in one civilized nation under the heavens. Divine envoys and emissaries walked amongst humanity to bring the good word of the heavens to the people. Nabu Malikata speaks of these days gone by in her conversation with God King Deshires, saying, quote, It was a faraway time of calm and peace. Divine envoys spoke openly with the people then, bringing them good words from the heavens. These envoys were the Zeli race. When Nabu Malikata was speaking to King Deshret about the dangers of continuing his pursuit for forbidden knowledge, she remarks, quotes, Nevertheless, hide my lesson in your heart. Remember the punishment that once was inflicted on the fallen envoys of heaven. This era would cease following the downfall of the Zeli race, who were cursed following the war with the second who came. Quotes, but in time, invaders descended from beyond the firmaments, bringing with them destruction, overturning rivers, spreading plagues. And though the invaders brought war to my former kin, they also brought about illusions that could break through shackles to the land. But the master of the heavens, consumed by fear for the rising tide of delusion and breakthroughs, sent down the divine nails to mend the land, laying waste to the mortal realm. We then suffered the torment of exile, stripped was our connection to heaven to our powers of enlightenment. So yes, you heard correctly. Twas the war between the primordial one and that bastard crackhead Dragon King Nibelung coming in for round two souped up on forbidden knowledge that ruins everything. Well played, brother. If you can't have this world, no one can. Now with that said, while it's unknown when or how she became a god, this should in 
theory make Nabu Malikata one of, if not the first god tied to the human realm. I mean, in one of her first interactions with Greater Lord Ruka Devata, she said, quote, Praise be to the Winged One, Lord over all the kingdoms of the lands. I am a spirit created at the beginning. I am a flickering illusion. I and the shimmering light that flows from the eyes of the creator. Given it would make no sense if she became a god following her and her race's fall from grace, the other alternative is she was always a god, and if she was always a god and was created at the beginning, then that would indeed make her the oldest god we know about, given both she and the Zeli race were from the... Given she and the Zeliris were there from the dawn of the creation of the human realm to act as envoys. Now this, of course, would make Enjo's statement wrong, unless, of course, again, he literally meant before the gods walked the earth, in which case Nabu Malikata was perhaps somewhere in the sky as opposed to the earth, which would in fact fit given the Zeliris did have palaces beyond the realm of the humans, such as the Moon Palace. Now, this is complete speculation on my part, but I'd imagine the second oldest god in Tivat was Greater Lord Ruka Devata, given she's an avatar of Ermansol. Now, this one is tough, given we don't actually know, but I view it as such. Ermansol should have existed before even the arrival of the Heavenly Principles, because it's the root of the Dendro element itself, and given the Dendro Dragon existed before the Heavenly Principles, we know the element's Dendro predates the Principles, and thus, so should Ermansol. Now, with that said, given the Heavenly Principles know how important Ermansol is, I mean, hell, when the Cataclysm struck Conria, all the Archons were summoned to Celestia, except for Greater Lord Ruka Devata because she had the more important task of protecting Ermansol. It would then make sense that following the remaking of the world by Fanes, Ruka Devata came into being to act as the guardian and caretaker of Ermansol. Furthermore, it would appear she had knowledge of the war with the second who came, given in her conversation with Malikata, she stated, quotes, If one dares to imitate the forbidden arts, only calamity awaits at the edge of divine knowledge. However, given she had access to Ermansol, she, you know, could have just Googled that shit. <laughs> After those two, I can only think of two gods whose existence coincided with the Zeli race's existence. In order, it should be Guizhong first, and then Rex Lapis. The stone tablets of fucking somewhere tell us. <laughs> nah, I'll get the source, I'll get the source. <laughs> Guili Assembly, the stone tablets of Guili Assembly, right? Quotes. In the beginning, when the people assembled to farm the land, a god named Guizhong descended whose dominion was over dust and whose reach shrouded the skies for thousands of miles around. The god laid down four commandments for the people. Then, another god descended, whose dominion was over Geo, and who brought the people of Liwei to this place. Jointly, they shepherded the people for their protection. Now, we know Rex Lapis existed just slightly before the end of the Moon Sisters, as the Solar Vermilion set writes, quote, It is said that when Rex Lapis was still young, the sun was a chariot that raced across the earth, when the three sisters of the night sky were martyred. In a calamity, the solar chariot fell into a deep gorge. And now, given Rex Lapis was still alive during this time, that would also mean Guizhong was alive during this time, given she descended onto Earth first. As to the question of where they descended from, it would seem the answer is simply the heavens. When when Rex Lapis died, Ganyu tells us his soul returned to the heavens, given, you know, returned, and you know. Uh, but this seems to be more spiritual than anything. Uh, should this hold true, however, then that would mean God King Remus also existed in the same capacity. If you are curious, however, God King Destrut existed long before Remus given Jurabod was able to rise and fall before Remus finally descended. However, keep in mind, despite this, Destrut must also be far younger than someone like Nabu Malikata given she had to tell him everything of the old world in an age she said was long gone. He himself admitted to not knowing anything of this ancient history, writing, quotes, She once described the night sky adorned with three bright moons, to me in a language I have now forgotten. Yes, the number of moons should be three. Now, with that said, I do want to throw in, you know, back to fucking Remus. It, it, it is difficult, <laughs> that guy, because... At some point before establishing Remuria, he went to the Primordial Sea and received a goblet from the original Hydro Sovereign, but when that was in relation to him creating Rumeria, who knows? So where does this leave us? There are at least three confirmed gods that existed during the Divine Envoy era, with Nabu Malikata being the oldest, just being described as a spirit who was created at the beginning. Then Guizhong, the second eldest, who just descended, and Rex Lapis, the third eldest, who just descended. However, I speculate that Greater Lord Ruka Devata was the second eldest crafted sometime after the world's creation to guard Ermansol. So far as I know, these are the first gods that came into being after the creation of the human realm, but before the downfall of the Zeli race. Interesting to note that if this is indeed an exhaustive list, 
Morax is the only remaining god from the Old World. Now with that said, the oldest three who came into being after the Great War should be Deshret first, Remus second, and then probably Egeria. Not much is known about where Deshret came from other than he's ominously a son of the sky. Remus just seemingly spawned in one day at the Primordial Sea where, <laughs> where the original Hydro Sovereign just inexplicably gave him unsurpassed authority in the form of a goblet and then one day just descended onto whatever fragments remained of the first era of what is now Fontaine and established Rumeria. Sometime after the rise and fall of Jurabah, this entire interaction must have happened at least after the existence of Deshret. And finally, there is Egeria, who came into being after being created by the Shade of Life to act as a heart for the Primordial Sea. Important to note, she existed at the same time as Rumeria. She committed the sin of reappropriating the Primordial Sea was locked up by Celestia, however, following the death of Remus, quotes, it was the heavens who chose the mistress of many waters, commanding her to return from her primeval prison to take over from the golden king and the rule the sea runes. So that's that. As for the rest of the gods, like Ventian gang, it's nigh impossible to state how long, for instance, he existed as a wisp before finally creating a form. And it's even worse for people like the twins who are just described as incarnations of lightning with no aids attached whatsoever. Even when Venti was a wisp, he wasn't even a god yet. Uh, I mean, still, the pattern just seems to be most gods came into existence following the onset of the Archon War. Interesting, isn't it?